Leicester City nil, Manchester United won. And all I have to say is that I'm very calm. Right now, I'm very calm. Shark Gaming here back with another review. And I must say, I've reviewed four matches for this season so far. And guess what? Out of the four matches, we have 75% win rate. Right now, we're on three wins in a row. Right now, we have Arsenal on Sunday. And I'm really, really gassed that maybe we won't destroy them. But we really have the chance to get it out of them. Now, we have a lot of things to talk about. For a second, I know a lot of you guys don't support Manchester United on the team. I know this is all about trolling. I know this is all about banter. But let's just be serious for a second, right? For the people who know ball, for the people who know football, reason with me for a second. I need you guys to just go in the comment section and just uh, tell me if you agree. Tell me if you disagree with what I'm saying. This side from that played today was actually very balanced. This team that came out was very balanced for Manchester United. And I don't want anybody to come out and say, oh my God, two weeks ago when we played Liverpool, Liverpool were injured. Most of their players are injured. It happens. It's a season. Everybody gets injured from. That's not an excuse. That's why you should have squad depth. I don't want to hear it from. I don't want to hear it. The next match, oh my God, it's just Southampton. Chelsea lost 2-1 to Southampton. I'm not saying Manchester United are better than Chelsea. All I'm saying is that you guys said that us beating Southampton was a buck up, right? It's one love. We, we went away. We went to wherever, they, I think it's St. Mary or whatever the hell it wants to be called. We went there. We got one love. Chelsea went there. They got 2-1 from. They got done out from. Literally. And Chelsea has a better defense than Manchester United. So what's the excuse there? I understand we have a better strike force, but we scored less or the same amount of goals as Chelsea. We literally just kept the clean sheets. No, we played bottom of the table, Leicester. And because they're bottom of the table and they're in bad form, we must just shit on them and say, oh, Leicester just lost for fun. So they're horrible. It's not like their defenders never played well today. Literally, the goal that was created was just a goal that most people just wouldn't stop. That goal was just right place, right time, right stop. No, for the people who know football, Ten Hag seems to be playing a nice fluent system with an actual number nine. He started the match today without Cristiano Ronaldo, of course. I thought that he was going to start Christie. Give him some match fitness and then sub him off. But he did the right thing. He started Rashford. Rashford, Ilanga and Sancho up top. And he subbed off all three of them. Gave game time to, to Casemiro, Ronaldo and I guess uh, Fred. Who I expect to probably start against Arsenal if we're being completely honest. And it worked out. Maybe Anthony even gets his debut um, sub on in the 60th minute or something like that. You know what I'm saying? All I'm saying is that I think the team played extre extremely well. Starting from the keeper, I have nothing to say about David De Gea. He was nothing like bad today. There were, so there's literally nothing to say about David here. Everything that I'd say about David here is 100% positive. I have nothing bad to say about David here. He didn't really have to do much work today, but he kept the balls that he was supposed to keep. He kept out a lovely free kick or two. He claimed a couple of crosses. His distribution seems to be better. It's working. Let's just move on. It's working. Okay, it's working. I still want him to get competition, and I'm glad we got the, um, the Brafka. You get me? Right back and left back, Malassi and Dalo. I love you guys. I love you guys. I have nothing to say. I love you guys. I don't care if you guys got two yellows, fam. I don't care, fam. I love you guys. I love the fight in the flipping dog. This is the 60th minute, bro. Dalo literally makes a, a, a sliding interception that goes out for our goal kick. And he wants him hoo, 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 to Martinez, bro. The man them literally have comrade around the back, bro. Back in the day, when I seen, the most we get is probably a couple of hand clap from. Now the man them puff each other chest and raise, you know, raise the spirits from. You know, good that is when you make a mistake or you do something good. And the man them run back and say, come on, we got this. No ease up. Good job. Even for the slightest things from. Even if we can't see the corner, then rather can't see the corner than can't see the goal. I'm loving the attitude that these new signings have brought. And I hope that it radiates all across. Manchester United and I hope they don't get corrupted because that's what usually happens. Usually the new signings start off new, lovely, and then they get corrupted because they're outnumbered. Hopefully, it just keeps flourishing. I love those two wing backs. Obviously, we need some more squad depth because I don't trust Luke Shaw and I don't, I don't trust Wan-Bissaka going forward. But Wan-Bissaka, he has decent short passing and he can be... Trust me, if you put if you put Wan-Bissaka on the back, more than likely he's going to make some nice last dish tackles. So he's good when needed. If we need to secure a one low victory in a match or we need to not concede, Wan-Bissaka can put in a shift from there. He could literally play a three at the back and put Wan-Bissaka at right centre back and have Dalo just run in the flanks and just a swing the knee to Christie. It could work, it could not work. Who knows? You know what I'm saying? Moving on, Varane and, and Martinez. That yellow card that Martinez get was the softest yellow card I've ever seen in my life. Granted, it was an unnecessary tackle, but the man literally just tell him, say, yo, Medea, you see me? Fair enough. Moving on to the midfield now. This is the problem that I have. Now, I'm not saying in any way, shape, or form that McTominay is good enough to be in Manchester United team. Obviously, he survived in m multiple managers and multiple managers believe in him, so I'm not going to be like, oh, he's not good enough. All I'm saying is that Manchester, all I'm saying is that McTominay has a place in the team 
and he actually has been doing a good job. You know what I'm saying? These last couple of matches, McTominay has been in very good form. I'm not even going to complain. Yes, obviously, Casemiro deserves to start over him. Yes, he will. Even Fred is better than McTominay. But McTominay is very good at doing what he does. I think Ten Hag literally just tells him, yo, Eriksen is going to play the deep line role. You're just there to do the interceptions, the aerial blockage, and maybe rough up a one or two players. And as you can see, McTominay's passing is actually quite decent. I don't know why he wasn't doing those passes all along, but he can actually string them cross field. He can string them forward. And his passing forward isn't so bad. It's just that most of the time we see him passing backwards because most people aren't really running the spaces to collect the passes. Or maybe, I don't know, bro. Maybe I'm making up excuses for McTominay. People were saying in the first half that McTominay was Mac Invisible fan. Bro, McTominay was playing an excellent match. This is the one of the first matches you can look on in a good while and say McTominay had a very good game. Not saying he was the best player on the pitch, but he had a very good game. And if you watch football and know football, you have to agree with it. Of course, we don't want him to start. All I'm saying is that he had a good game. He did what he was supposed to do. He, Bro, if you check the man's stats right now, it probably has 90% everything from. Everybody keeps talking about how he's not good or whatever. Clearly, the managers, Ole, Rodnick, um, Carrick, Eric Ten Hag, Jose Mourinho, they all see something in McTominay that most of us don't see. And he keeps proving that us wrong over and over again so why do we keep complaining we should just shut up and watch our team play ball because that's all we need to do sit down watch our team play ball because we saucing right now fam bring me arsenal fam arsenal are on five games win ah oh, lovely beautiful top of the table bro manchester united's on a redemption arc right now three wins on the bounce one go one one game one home game two away matches and we're going to old trafford again this weekend fam sunday arsenal i want your head fam Zinchenko, Tierney, Anthony gonna whip up that blow over brother. Martinez and mash up Gabriel Jesus fam. It's literally the battle of Gabriel's versus the battle of Anthony's blood, man. This is gonna be crazy. If Martial can come back for this match, Martial Rashford Sancho up top. Oh gosh, it done fam. It done. That defense, the mash up blood. Even though Arsenal playing very good, but I just have to hype up the team because I'm in a good mood right now. Now the strike force, right? Well, Bruno, I'm gonna count Bruno in the strike force. Most people said that Rashford was, wasn't offering a lot in the number nine position. And this is how I know most people don't really know football. The number nine position is supposed to there. If you're playing the deep line number nine, what you're supposed to do is do link up play, make spaces by drawing out defenders. So your Cam, who is Bruno Fernandes or Ericsson in some cases, or even McTominay, can get spaces to run in between. Or you, if you play Pest Mobile, which most of us do, you hold the ball up and you spread it on the flanks. Now, I want to know. What part of what Rashford was doing today was wrong? Don't get me wrong. He made some bad touches. He made some bad passes. He even made some bad decisions. But if you look on that match and tell me that Rashford was invisible in that game, keep in mind he got an assist, but let's not, let's not talk about stats. If you look in that match and tell me that Rashford in that game was invisible, then you do not know football and you do not know the role of a number nine. Yes, he didn't score. Yes, he, he didn't do much in terms of assisting or whatever. He was, he was, he was drawing out defenders so much. Bruno Fernandes was intercepting and drawing out defenders so much. Him and Bruno really just interchanging. I'm loving it. It, it clearly shows that Eric is actually, well, I guess he's pinning Rashford to be a backup number nine in the squad. Because obviously he's a left wing and he does do track back. But it's obvious that Rashford is doing a very good job. If you don't know, and I, obviously I'm saying if Martel is, is fit, you start Martel over Rashford in, in the number nine. I'm not saying Rashford is supposed to be our number or starting number nine. I'm simply saying that he was playing exceptionally well today. If you don't believe that, then you don't know what a number nine is. And that's fine. It's cool. The wingers, Ilanga, I keep telling you, I can't cuss the guy. I don't want the guy to start, but I can't cuss him. He keeps doing his job. He's literally a job player. You know Dan James? Dan James is literally a squad player who just does the job, gets you the, the, the puts in a shift. Ilanga just puts in a shift, fam. Passing is good. His shooting is decent. His runs are amazing. He's very quick. He's very agile. He's very. He's very focused and he's always tracking back and hel helping out Dalo. I have no flick freaking issues with him. When him, Rashford, Bruno and Sancho combining right there from him all interchange and go on the left wing. Sometimes even go up the center forward. I don't like Ilanga as like a starting player, but I have no problems with him. If Tenog wants to start him every single match and he keeps doing what he's doing, then fine, bro. Ilanga is literally one of those players who might not get a lot of stats. But if you check, the team plays better when he's in there. I can't even lie to you from. When I look at the team sheet, I'm like, oh God, Ilanga again. But when he makes the game, Ilanga is always doing what he needs to be done. So it's like, I can't even cuss him. Now nah, I'm like, I can't even cuss him. Sancho is just flipping saucy, bro. He only wants to score calm goals, blood. Like, you can't score a little tapping sometimes. 
Bro, the man always want go round keeper. She fought defenders, bro. Like, they have families, blood. Why are you treating them like that, Sancho? They have families. This is all people with a hit list on you. Bro, joking, just joking. I'm just saying, but still, fam. Oh my God, Sancho, that goal was perfect. That was a perfect team goal. And Sancho had, Sancho had a, like, let me tell you. Even though the goal looks simple, Sancho had a very intricate part playing in that. Sancho was offside first, so everybody was just forgetting about him. So Sancho was nice and easy. Bruno got the ball, look up, find Rashford. Rashford calculated how much he needed to put on that little dink of a pass, put the pass over, and bam, Sancho just runs through the keeper because the keeper is off his line. I thought he was going to chip it, to be fair, is me? Or even kick it into the keeper because it happens. Rashford would have probably done that. But we got the goal, and that was all the goal that we needed. For the last three games, we only won by one goal, but it shows that our defenders and our defense is getting better. It is actually playing very well. No, am I saying that Maguire needs to be benched forever? I wish, but he cannot be benched forever. He has to play eventually. So what I had wanted today, I wanted us to be three or four goals up today so that we could have just brought on Maguire so and get some match fitness in. That way there, because the thing is, I wanted Varane to go scot-free. I want Varane to go through the games and I know so, ah, I'm arrest him, so I know 100% so he's fit for the Arsenal match. I never wanted him to play the full 90 because, you know, Varane kind of injury prone. But it's kind of weird. No, I'm not, knock on wood, not trying to claim anything or anything, but hmm, when Varan plays with Maguire a lot, he's rather injured a lot. Hmm, played with Martinez three matches, it's the longest he's given us in a while. No injuries, thank God. As I said, I'm knocking wood. But we continue. We may not be scoring as much goals or as many goals as City, but we're doing a shift, you know what I'm saying? We're doing our best. We're putting it in. It's better to go and get a little three points than by some one goal. I'll take them any day of the week, you know what I'm saying?